bring our meeting to order. It is now 6.04. Um, on, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the date. April 6th, 2022. Um, and we want to remind everyone that due to the governor, governor's proclamation on 2028, um, proclamation 2028 related to the COVID-19 emergency and open public meeting. This meeting is being held remotely um, via WebEx. Um, so we ask that we'll um, actually address some housekeeping rules um, following roll call. And I wanna just um, actually turn over to Monica and ask her, can you confirm that we have quorum? Good evening, Shay. This is Monica Negrilla. Yes, you do have quorum tonight. Thank you so very much. And do we have any members who weren't able to make it tonight? Yes, we do have a couple of members who are absent and they were excused. They let us know in advance that they cannot attend. So um, Kelly Mann uh, let us know she cannot attend tonight. She's traveling. And Megan uh, Riley, uh, Richley, I'm sorry, she's also absent tonight and she cannot make it. I do see, however, that we still have a couple of board members who are not um, in the attendance yet tonight in attendance. Um, and they may join us a little bit later, but I don't see Christina. Um, I also don't see Helen. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it. I think that's it. Thank you. All right. Well, if that's okay, we can go ahead and move forward. Um, so we'll start, um, with the approval of last week of, of the minutes for last week, March 2nd, um, or I'm sorry, actually, Monica, do we have any public comments? Uh, thank you, Shay. No, we don't have public comments. Nobody signed up for, uh, tonight for public comments and I don't see anyone in the attendance either. Wonderful. And then it looks like. We have okay in in that case, we're ready to move forward. Um, so now we will actually do the approval of last uh, last month's meeting um, for March 2nd, 2022. Um, does anyone need time to review the minutes from March? Say, if I may, I have 1 quick um, clarification for uh, the board. Tonight, board members, you are reviewing two sets of minutes. You are reviewing the minutes from the regular meeting that we held on March 2nd. And we are also, you are reviewing the minutes that we held, uh, we had for the special meeting that we held on March 14th. And so um, if you have no um, edits to the minutes, you can just approve them all together um, or separately as well if you have um, edits. Thank you. Is it everyone had a chance to review the minutes? All righty, then if we're ready, um, we can go ahead and vote to approve the minutes with no adjustments if we don't have any. Do we have any adjustments that we need to make? All right, it looks like no. Um, so, uh, and, and I'm sorry, Monica, should I propose a vote? You you can also do just the shortcut if there are no objections and no one wants to make edits. You can just um, say Shay that okay if we if, if there are no uh, no edits, amendments then... or objections to the minutes. I'd like to propose the minutes be um, unanimously approved. Is that yes. correct? Yes, as presented. Yes, absolutely. All right, wonderful. Okay, I'll say it one more time. If there is an if there is no amendments or objections to the minutes, I'd like to propose the minutes be unanimously approved. Thanks everyone. Um, the minutes are approved and then we will move forward um, with our agenda items. And our first one is actually the March 21st, 2022 um, council meeting that Tony and I attended. Um, and I think Tony is actually going to be our presenter for tonight. Welcome Tony. Thank you very much, Shay. Um, so, actually, um, nothing visually to to present, but I will just uh, can just talk through um, the th the thoughts of the um, city council members. Um, the first thing I'd like to impart on, on the meeting, in which um, we wrote a great, um, uh, I guess we would call it maybe a public relations release, or if you want to call it a resolution. Um, the, the all of the city council, uh, they all made great personal comments. Uh, some made comments about uh, 
uh, their own personal experiences um, in, in dealing with what their um, their family members have dealt with during World War II and um, their uh, their culture uh, in that and um, the different types of things that happened to to them as well as um, them the, the city council really imparting uh, our work you know, just really imparting their 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 love of our work what we've done what we painstakingly put together in that message that um, um, that they really so much enjoyed. What I liked about in, in, within the meeting from before the meeting started is that every council person that um, yeah, had a chance to 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 meet um, and, and talk with me, they all love the fact that we as an equity board are doing something. You know, we're not just sitting on our hands. We're not spinning our wheels. And I know sometimes we feel that maybe we are because we're not really proactively doing a lot of things. Um, but they were very appreciative of our work, especially the mayor as well. Very, very appreciative of our, of our work. Um, uh, but but back to the message that uh, that we put on our resolution and our, that message about Ukraine. What they loved about that message is not only that we talked about the war going on in Ukraine, but also that our our plight and our fight is not with Russian citizens. It's not to blame all, you know Russian citizens. So that was great to actually have that in our um, letter to the community, as well as that call to action about equity in our homes and equity in our places of business and equities in our places of worship. Um, so they were all very moved, and that was the the, the right. Uh, uh, I guess maybe not the right, but that's what I would actually really say about. Uh, how they enjoyed the message, uh, that they were very moved by our work and uh, very excited about uh, seeing what comes next from us and our married group here in the equity board. So I'm really, really, very, very excited about uh, it made me feel very honored. Not that I didn't feel honored before, but just hearing it from outside of our group, I felt very honored to be a part of this this very, very fascinating team of of one mind for equity, but yet different personalities and different experiences and different passions. And uh, um, you know, that's just my take on the meeting. Thank you so much, Tony. I 100% agree. I think the meeting went phenomenally. Um, we did get a lot of great feedback. Um, I felt like everyone kind of saw themselves in the statement. <laughs> so I must commend you all for putting such great wording and making it just feel welcoming. It was a really, really phenomenal message and it was very clear that we wanted to support Ukrainians while still supporting our Russian colleagues as well. So that was actually really quite moving and it came through very clearly um, in addition to the fact that we wanted to highlight some of the ways that people could actually get involved and people saw value in that. And I, I can't tell you how appreciative I was in, in presenting, <laughs> but <laughs> Also, very appreciative in seeing how everyone reacted. Um, it was just very joyful and really reminded me how important this group is. Did anyone have any questions or concerns? No. All right, we're quiet tonight. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, in that case, then we will go ahead and move on to our next agenda item. Um, but before we do that, I do want to do um, come back to just take a quick step back just to remind everyone to please um, remember our housekeeping rules. And of course, if you have a question or a comment, be sure to write question or comment in the chat and not ask or state your question or comment in the chat. So that way we are able to all share in the answer for those who call in. Also, we'd like to remind you to just please be sure to speak clearly, concisely, and slightly slower than normal so that our interpreters can actually go ahead and provide that interpretation piece. And then lastly, of course, just try to make sure that your comments are relevant, um, courteous, and fair to the group. All righty, so our next agenda item for tonight um, is going to go back to Monica, actually. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, 
And Monica, I'm sorry, did you have any comments about the special meeting we had? Oh, thank you so much. I, yeah, no, I was just going to say, yes, I just wanted to say a big shout out and thank you to both you and Tony for attending that meeting. I know that lots of evening meetings in addition to the regular board meetings are not easy, but it was just so wonderful to, uh, to have you both there, one virtual, one in person. And so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to add plus one. It was really, really um heartwarming to see the support from a uh, mayor Polly and city council so definitely a great atmosphere that that evening although of course you know the the war is not um not positive um for sure and it just continues so thank you thank you <laughs> thank you so much monica uh, and i see tony had a comment i'm sorry tony would you please share with us Yes, actually, just a one quick comment. Like it was, and uh, piggybacking off what you said, Monica, it was great to actually be there in person and to finally meet someone from our equity board in person. So I wish more more of you could have been there. I mean, I hope we're able to, um, sometime in the near future, even just get together and talk, hang out, or whatever. So um, I enjoyed actually being there in person. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tony. I'm sure we all are looking forward to the time when we can all be together and uh, get to know each other a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> all right, our next agenda item is going to be um, the work plan review and brainstorming. Monica, are you ready to share with us? I am. Good evening again. Thank you so much. Um, before I move into uh, talking about our work plan for 2022, I want to just pause and welcome this evening also Christina. I saw that you're able to join and Helen. Um, and just wanted to know that since um, you're not quite there uh, early at the meeting. Um, but good to see you and good evening. So board mem members for the work plan conversation, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation, but with your permission, I would like to share my screen just to share the, uh, the actual work plan draft with you. Um, I would love to speak for a few minutes uh, to just provide like a reminder of where we were, where we started and uh, the ideas moving forward. And then after that, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and I have a couple of questions for, for you all brainstorming um, as a follow up from suggestions uh, received from you last month. Um, so with that, um, allow me, give me just a moment. I had it all open just right. And now all of my Word documents are not like I want them to. So give me another moment. Here I go. Okay. So, I believe you should be able to see the blue table document. Is that what you see on the screen? Yes. So can we you can get see a little it. bit larger, Monica, please? Yes. So, I would love Thank to you. make it larger. I'm wondering, is that the only thing that you see on the screen or do you see other documents as well? I see another document. I was going to okay. ask if we needed to put them side by side or if you can put them on top. Yeah. Uh, no, and that's why I, I apologize and thank you. I got upgraded to this very big fancy screen and I'm not sure how it, <laughs> um, how it shares, if it shares my entire screen. Is this a little bit better? Yes, we can see the document or at least I can. Um, I, I don't want to speak for the group here, but yes, I can see it. And then Lucrecia, is the font large enough to where you can see? Or not? Let me. I'll get by. Let me just increase it even more. Is that better? Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. So what you see on the screen board members, it's, I, I just started putting together the, the draft work plan for us for the year. Um, and then side by side, I also added some of the community conversations. This is going to be our next agenda item. So with your permission, I'm just going to uh, talk just briefly about this part because we are going to talk a little bit in more details in, in uh, a little bit later. Um, but just wanted to, to remind you as, as this board formed in November with an opening um, meeting and then followed by that in December, um, we had, uh, we've been quite busy. Uh, we had quite a few topics assigned by the administration. 
Um, and so we worked on, on quite a few things. But one of the first um, assignments that we received from Mayor Polly, if you may recall early on, uh, was to conduct an um, equity um, gap analysis. Uh, and so that's something that we really did not have time to tackle yet, and I would like to talk about that. Uh, before we go there, I just wanted to provide a brief overview. If you remember, we worked on rules and regulations in addition to basic trainings and Open Meetings Act. In, in January, you adopted rules and regulations for the board. Um, then we started having an equity conversation. This was like a member proposed. Tony led us in some great conversation on equity versus equality. Uh, then we didn't have time, so we had to postpone that a little bit. Um, and then part of that, uh, starting that process of the equity gap analysis, uh, if you recall, we had Jeff Watling, the Director of Parks and Community Services, provide an overview of the parks. Sorry. Slow down just Por a little Monica. Thank you so much, interpreters. I apologize for that. Um, so, yes, so then followed by that, um, we had um, Jeff Watlings provide an overview of the parks and community services. Um, and then we were assigned a great topic on the cultural and religious calendar. We worked on that topic for two months in January and February. Um, during that time, we also started working with our human resources director on the city's equity framework. As a brief reminder, that topic will come back to you next month as um, per your request with a training. Um, if uh, you recall, uh, a training was requested to dive deeper before making a recommendation. So next month, we will continue that. So for two months, we discussed a little bit on the equity framework. Um, then we continued with community engagement process. We had Black History Month as an event hosted by you as the board. And so that takes us now to where we are today. Um, in conversations with our board leadership, Shay and Tony, um, we were discussing that really we did quite a few things, but we really did not have time to focus on long-term planning and developing a longer-term uh, plan for the board. And so, therefore, what I would like to propose for your discussion tonight is to go back to the initial assignment um, that um, we received from Mayor Polly, uh, which was to um, do a gap analysis um, for the city. Um, and for that, what we had planned initially to do um, was to um, first as a first step to really learn in more depth what the city is doing internally and what are the resources available in the community. So both an external, external and an internal component. For the internal component, we were going to invite each um, department director to come and attend an equity board meeting to um, introduce their department, the services that they provide. So you as an equity board, you have a more in-depth understanding of what the city does um, and how things work at the city. Um, the second thing that we proposed for that was the external, the community component to that. And for that, we were gonna invite um, community equity groups in Issaquah um, and in the uh, east side region uh, for us again as an equity board for you to learn in more depth on what work they're doing. Um, so then once we learn um, of, of the existing services within the city, both internally and externally, then we can talk about an approach on how to really go about identifying what are the equity related gaps and those would then help us create a plan for um, a longer term action item for the equity board. So with that, 
I think I just, as you may have seen also in your agenda packet, I just drafted for the upcoming months uh, when you see city department and or community equity group introduction, it's basically inviting different departments and different community groups in the upcoming months to come and visit you to introduce themselves. Um, also left, as I mentioned, you started working on the equity framework with our human resources um, uh, director. Um, and as I mentioned, there's a training scheduled for uh, next month for May. Um, and then depending on how the training goes and the discussion, if you are gonna be ready to make a recommendation at that meeting, then you, you can make a recommendation for city council uh, at that meeting. Otherwise, uh, we'll add an, either another special meeting or we'll move to the meeting in June to make a recommendation for city council. Um, so these are for now kind of like this is um, the draft plan um, and the way we've been thinking about starting the work for the equity board. So we really we can start diving a little bit deeper um, instead of just having the short um timely topics which i'm sure we are still going to have short and timely topics um however it would be also great to kind of like focus a little bit on long-term action items and so with that i think i would like to pause and um ask for your thoughts on this proposed plan for for the next few months and then my second question is um, and after this discussion um Ray brought up last month um, a great um, idea since you had a chance to introduce at the very first meeting, but because everything was so new, I think it may be worth revisiting that introduction Ray suggested last month that perhaps it would be great to hear from each of you on uh, why did you decide to choose the equity board and kind of like what would you like to see accomplished uh, as part of the equity board. And then I think we can make the list and kind of like add those wishes um, to uh, the work plan and then see how we may incorporate it with the other things that were assigned to us. So those are my two questions for you tonight. Um, and I'm gonna hand it back to you in case we'd love to hear questions and comments. Thank you so much, Monica. It looks like Ray is ready to jump in and I encourage you to come off mute and tell us your comment. Hi, yeah, good evening, everybody. Just to piggyback on what Monica said, I, I think that's really critical for our, our equity board here to really just share what brought us to the table. What is it that inspired us to be want to be part of the of this committee of uh, serving the city of Issaquah, there's something must have driven us to the table. And I think that might open up some avenues on which we wanna pursue, whether that be our involvement with um, activists or organizations or special events that might've occurred in the city of Issaquah or outside the city of Issaquah. Uh, some of us are transplants, right? We're not really, we haven't been here that long. So what was it that we may have seen outside of our city that we feel would be appropriate to expound upon and, and apply to our, our community. So, I mean, I have some things in mind and I thought it would be a great um, venue for us to share some of that. There's some ideas. Thank you so much, Ray. And um, before I actually comment, I would like to just ask the group, is anyone ready to actually answer Monica's questions and uh, to Ray's point, share? why you decided to become an equity board member and what you'd like to see. Well, if no one's ready, I will go ahead and jump in um, just to give some people some ideas. Um, and of course, I'm also of the mindset that it's better to be to volunteer than to be voluntold. <laughs> so I'll jump right in. Um, okay, so um, I moved here from St. Louis about four years ago, um, and I saw a, a pretty significant need to help others become more educated about 
the things that are happening outside of Issaquah. Um, and then, of course, once life started changing um, with the presence of the pandemic and all of that, I found a whole lot of concern with how Issaquah was actually handling equity equitable issues. Um, and I found it hard to understand how they could address those without having a member of the community that experiences some of those things that we see as opportunities to grow the city and help us become a better community. So I, of course, decided to apply <laughs> and um, it was probably one of the better experiences I've had with just convincing people that I love doing DEI work. Um, it's something I do in my job. Um, it's something that I like doing in the community, and it's definitely something that I feel is necessary to help our community be better. Be better. Um, <laughs> there's, I'm raising two small citizens that intend to um, one day be a part of Issaquah's future, and I want to make sure that they not only know the struggles and the work that it takes to make these things happen, but also help preserve those things and help bring our community forward as life changes, as our community changes, as things begin to adjust and people start to um, even change in their perceptions. So I want my my part of the community to be ready for that um, because change is happening and it's happening a little bit faster than I think a lot of people think. <laughs> um, but in any, either case, my goal um, or my hope for this group is that we are able to not only make Issaquah more equitable, but make it a very welcoming place for all kinds of people. And um, I think I share in the experience that it hasn't always been as welcoming as I'd like it to be or as much as I wanted it to be. And I think that that is changing. All right, and then I will go ahead and throw it to Tony because it looks like he also has a comment or he's ready to comment. Sure, I'm ready to comment. So good evening, everyone. I didn't say that before when I was talking about the meeting at, uh, at the city council. But um, so, yeah, I'm going to answer um, those same questions. So for me, I mean, I moved here to Issaquah in um, 2015, um, but I had always heard, well, I'm not always heard. Um, I had been in, to Issaquah many times before. Uh, I worked for a company called LG Electronics. And in my job as a regional corporate trainer, I would come out here to Issaquah and I would come out to talk with the folks at AT&T and folks at Verizon and, and T-Mobile and whatnot and talk with them about our devices and whatnot. So I never really thought of more of Issaquah as other than maybe kind of a closed off community until actually moving here in 2015. And so when I moved here in 2015, for me, um, I was the only person of color I saw every day. I'd go to the Safeway in the Highlands. I'd go to Emerald City Smoothies down on Gilman. I'd go to the UPS store where Shay and I almost got a chance to meet each other. Um, I'd go down there and I would be the only, not the only black face, but the only person of color that I'd pretty much see. But over the years, I've started to see it change. So the reason why I got involved in the equity board is actually, I would love to say that I saw a need in Issaquah, but it really wasn't a need in Issaquah for me, for me personally. It wasn't a need of just in Issaquah, it was a need in, ter in the world. And I saw that, that, I mean, everyone has a lofty goal of maybe, I don't want to say everyone, but some people have a lofty goal is they'd love to change the world. And I would love to be able to change the world in terms of like equity and love and unity and caring for your fellow person, you know? And so that's why I wanted to get involved. I found that myself, like after I left the military, I loved service. I love like my time spent in the military, even though what I did in the military was more, I just say was of a violent nature, but we kept the peace. And I miss that service, that service to not just my country, but my service to keeping the peace into the world. And I sat on the sidelines too long. And I, I felt like it was just time for me to, and you know, and I will admit, and then just outing myself, it really took what happened with George Floyd for me to say, 
it's time for me not just to speak up in my home because you guys have heard me talk like my wife she's white and so there's a lot of conversations that we did not have until george floyd and it took those conversations for me to realize that wow a lot of people here in issaquah definitely need to know about equity need to know about you know get a, a true education on true history and then that i think that if we can all just like get there get there to the fact of true history get to the fact of true lived experiences in the world if we can just start one with our homes and then two start with our communities which in issaquah maybe that will just spread and spread and spread and spread and just balloon out and hopefully you know to Washington State, to the United States, to the world. So for me, that's why I really wanted to want to get involved. And I'm so very appreciative of the camaraderie that we have as a group. That's why I really want to meet all of you in person because we, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, the things that we want to do and we talk about the things that we are doing as an equity board. And sometimes we have a little fun with each other before a call begins. But it's nice to actually be a part of this great equity board that wants to see change happen. And and that's what I that's the biggest reason why I joined the equity board is to make change happen. And I think I see that in every single one of us. So that's my take on it. Thank you so much, Tony. There's so much I wanna say, but it is not my turn. <laughs> Ms. Lisa, <laughs> would you please come off mute and join us in, with your comment? Sure. So, um, I, I grew up in a community that was um, almost 99% African American. And um, when I then went to college was in an environment that was almost 99% not African American. <laughs> and um, my, my experience in college was that I felt that I was around a lot of really good people who had just never had the chance to interact with an African-American person as a peer. And I felt that it was my responsibility to be an ambassador and, and, and to bring that opportunity because there wasn't anyone else. It's a little bit like the expression, you might be the only Jesus someone knows, well, you might be the only black person that someone knows. And, I moved to Issaquah, I moved to uh, Washington State from the East Coast in 2020, and I moved to Issaquah in 2021. And um, I really haven't seen any particular things missing or lacking in Issaquah, you know, but certainly during that time and, and during the time I've been in Washington, all of the um, protests for Black Lives Matter you know, happened and and so much political polarization happened. And, you know, I think some of the gains that I thought we had made, it just seemed like, wow, there's a lot of gains that we still really need to make and more than maybe I even realized that we needed to make. And also begin to appreciate that change really happens at the individual and local level much more so than at a national level. So I think that the conversation I have with the person who I meet at the store, um, just this week I was at the pharmacy and the pharmacist was an Asian woman who said to me, you know, someone came in the other day and said to me, I need to speak to someone who speaks English. I don't want to speak to you. And, you know, I think that my conversation with her um, was more impactful than some of the things that might happen on a national level. My conversation with her won't make headlines, but I think it makes more of a difference. And so when the opportunity to join the equity board arose, I said, okay, you know, this is an opportunity to just be um, 
be a part of that change on the local level. And I, I think, you know, change, I think change happens on small levels, but that make big changes ultimately. And that's all I'm hoping to see and accomplish out of this group is um, more small steps towards positive change. That's it. Thank you so much, Alyssa. That was beautiful. <laughs> I, I love it. Thank you so much. You both have given me so many things to talk about. Um, but I'd like to invite Monica back because I think we have someone in attendance today. Thank you very much, um, Shay and board members. Yeah, I just wanted to pause for a moment. I noticed that we have someone in the attendance and just welcome them for the evening. Uh, Julian, uh, we see you in the attendee section. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Um, um, and feel free if you have any questions or follow up comments to follow up, um, via email or even, uh, just let me know via chat. Um, if you would like to make a public comment while that section passed, I'm sure that if, uh, if you would like to make a public comment, I'm pretty sure that the equity board members would love to hear your comments. Um, so feel free to just send a chat or use the raise hand feature. Um, otherwise, we'll just assume that uh, you're just here listening, which is absolutely uh, fine and we welcome that. So just welcome. Thank you so much, Monica. And I'd also like to welcome Julian. We are happy that you are here. Um, and I see uh, Lucretia, you had a comment. Would you please come off mute? Thank you, Shay. So the reason that I came on to um, the equity board was um, takes me back to when I first joined the Commission of Human Services. Um, I joined the commission with the intention of doing the work that it would take to get this board up and up and running. And so I came on to the commission to make sure that this board um, took root and did the work with the other commissioners as well as Monica to get us to where we we where we were when we when we all first became the equity board prior to that um i have a long history of activism wherever i have lived i consider myself an activist rather than just uh, a private citizen i'm i've always been pretty active in any community i have lived in and um, I worked in higher education for about 15 years. And my role there was to send um, US students overseas. So I designed all of the study abroad programs for a small liberal arts um, college in Portland, Oregon. But um, when I first started at that institution, I was one of two people of color in administration. Um, the faculty was made up of 98% men. And so there was a lot of, there were a lot of issues that I saw coming from the outside. I was kind of a, I was kind of like the underdog in that um, I didn't come from higher ed. I came from social, from social work. And so I um, worked really hard at the small liberal arts college to um, join different committees and, and ask the questions that needed to be asked such as, you know, where are the students of color? Why are we counting foreign students as in the numbers that we're using for um, represent, representing people of color? Um, why, are, why don't we offer scholarships to more students of color and or students who come from uh, limited income backgrounds, et cetera? And so I feel that I, I, have, I have that history under my belt. Um, I'm not as uh, emotional in public about the work that I have done historically, uh, but I am in my own way and join up and doing the work and doing the research and making sure that when we go to make a presentation that we have solid data to back up what it is that we're asking for, because I believe that yes, there is a place for our emotions to to kind of be the foundation that guides us but unfortunately that that isn't 
always enough to get us from point A to point B and moving in the direction that we need to be going. And so I always go back to kind of like the work that I did for my master's degree. Um, my master's work was around recognizing um, social, um, social capital and what that looks like and what it means. Um, because a lot of us take that for granted. We don't know what our social capital is worth because we don't know what we don't know. And we also don't know what other people don't know. Um, and so my work was around addressing um, access, funding, um, college going knowledge and social capital. And so when we decided to, you know, bring the proposal to the council, um, as Monica can attest, um, the work that I contributed was more around getting people to understand the importance of getting all of us across that finish line and why that matters. So currently, if we look at the numbers in Issaquah, we, we will see from the 2010 to the 2020 census, a huge change in the demographics of the community, right? And with that change, we are, one of the, the, the things that I want to keep drawing our attention back to is how our children are faring in our schools, our children of color, okay? Because they are the future, they are the ones that are coming up. And whereas we may see a lot of success in our European American students, um, you know, who are getting, you know, very high um, AP scores and SATs and they go to college, et cetera. I want answers to where are our children of color? Why are they not um, competing at the same level as their peers? Because at the end of the day, what we need to remember is that those youth who are outnumbering our European youth in terms of numbers, if they are not equally educated, if they don't have access, then the community will be impacted. And that's why it matters, right? Um, and so anyway, so basically, um, I have a long history of doing this sort of work before DEI was a thing. I, yeah, I still kind of laugh about the fact that we now have a, you know, an acronym for it. Um, and I just want to keep asking the question of the work that we're doing today needs to include the younger generations. I want to hear their voice as well represented. And for us to keep asking, okay, when we retire, right? Cause we all shared more or less our age tonight. When we retire in a few years, there has to be people who have the same level of education or better than we have to keep this, this agenda alive well and moving forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucretia. I loved your backstory. It was so good hearing about what you've done prior to this. So thank you for sharing. Um, and I also see that Ray has a comment followed by Lorna and Helen. Oh, and Jacob. <laughs> so we'll start with Ray if he's ready. Oh, I don't know how I ended up back on the list, but since you called me oh. out. <laughs> um, Sorry. <laughs> what, if I, since, since I got this opportunity, Shay, I wanted to share some things that brought me to the table. I, I work in healthcare, and one of the things that I'm passionate about is um, how challenging it is to get healthcare in this country. So uh, for those of you who don't follow trends, healthcare now accounts for the largest um, expense in our gross domestic product, and you can see that with people, especially ones with families. So um, I worked for the healthcare institution here that resides in Issaquah, which is Swedish Medical Center. So I thought opportunities where our, our equity board can work not only with the hospital system that's largest here, and when we talk about healthcare systems, it's not just Swedish, it's physically present here. We also have clinics from U University of Washington. We have clinics that are associated with um, Multicare down in Tacoma. They all have clinics here that serve our communities. So I think if there's opportunities to partner with them, if they understand the makeup and going back to Lucretia's comments, are these, these, these organizations need to be involved in our strategy. So I thought if there's ways to connect with them and show that people are in need of better and more affordable health care using our population as a sample that might be a good target for this equity board so thank you 
Thank you so much, Ray. And you make such a good point. I would love to hear more about your work and how we can support um, even more. But of course, I know that we are a little limited on time, so I'll jump right over to Lorna if she's ready. Yes, thank you so much. And Ray, it was my fault. I had thought we'd missed to skip to you uh, in the comment section. I was like, hey, wait. Anyway, um, so this is my 22nd year living in Issaquah, and I have watched the city of Issaquah change quite a bit uh, through that time. My sister had actually moved here in 87 and in between that time, even in the 90s, I'd stayed with her several times as I was going to school. And so, again, watching Issaquah grow, and Issaquah was very much remote, very much concerned rural community. And even when I got hired, I was literally one of two teachers who were not white. My district was pretty much all white teachers. Um, and you please slow down your pace. Oh, sorry. Including the students. Um, but things started changing, and as things started changing in my work, I started hearing experiences from students and staff about the experiences in the community, comments made by parents about people of color, about our African American students. And at that time, I was working as a teacher, and so it, didn't imp it impacted me, but I, unlike Lucretia, I never saw myself as an advocate, as someone who would you know, fight for social justice. I was very much all about just being an educator, a teacher type. But in this job right now, I am doing a lot more work in equity and that is something different and it opened my eyes to a lot more. And one of the very first things that I learned and I heard from students was, you know, you guys are doing all of this great work to support teachers and students, but what are you doing to the community? And that's where we are feeling the, so much impact coming to school after having people, neighbors, you know, you know, community stores say things to us and what are you doing about that? And it hit me because I wasn't, I couldn't, I, I didn't know how to help that. And when you hear students crying out for that, you know you have to do something to help because that's painful. And so I wanted to do more work. And so while I'm not in this role as a employee of the Sequoia School District and working here and doing this work as a community member, it's more because I'm, I'm very committed to students and children still. And I want to have those conversations with our community members, with our neighbors, with people that our students interact with so that they are not saying and doing things that are harmful and damaging. Because if they're going through these microaggressions in the community, when they come to school, they're not ready to learn. So we, the teachers in the schools cannot be fully responsible. It is a community responsibility. And in working with the community, very often it was like, oh no, this is Issaquah, this doesn't happen here. So then I had to tell all my you know, horror stories. They're like, what? No way. And it's hard because you don't want to have to tell them and teach them every single time. It has to be a community effort. People have to recognize and lean into this work. You don't, like, you cannot constantly be having to defend and say, yes, this is why the work is needed. And we also need more allies, white allies. And I know they exist, but they don't, I think there's a hesitancy like me to get involved. Like oh, other people are fighting this fight. So how do we make this more about a community kind of conversation and pull a whole bunch of people in to start off by saying, yep, this problem does exist. And yes, as a community, we're going to recognize that we need to be aware and address this issue because we want all kids to be successful. And so I truly want to lean into the all kids, not just the privileged few. And so how do we do that? Thank you so much, Lorna. Um, I wholeheartedly relate to your comment because I absolutely experienced all of that, including the microaggressions, all of it, and people not believing me when I said that this has happened in this city. Um, with these people, with my students who go go to school alongside yours. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, I, I just love this conversation. <laughs> so thank you. Um, Helen, I see you were next. There you go. 
Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for the opportunity, Ray, for this one. Um, I moved to Issaquah from Uganda in East Africa in February of 2016. I moved with my husband and my, my daughter um, uh, for work. So I've been a stay-at-home mom all this time. And uh, yeah, coming from a place, of course, in Africa where it, some of these issues are not very, they, they were not in my face and not prevalent. It, I was coming into a community where it was obviously going to be glaring in my face and in my daughter's that um, I was standing out as the different one. But I didn't make much of it until I started to have experiences um, for myself, for my daughter and for my husband within the community. I think the first that stood out for me was my daughter in preschool who got told by a kid they can't play with her because she's black. Um, a preschooler, this is three year old. so. It, it got me a bit scared if I'm living in a good community for my kid and if she's going to be safe in public school. This was preschool. I was more worried actually about public school. Um, a lot of uh, the other community of Ugandans and Africans live in other communities, not in Issaquah. So we kept hearing comments like, what are you guys doing in Issaquah? Like, can't you find the rest of us where we are? But we had our reasons for coming to Issaquah and we haven't left, um, we've weathered the storms. Um, and, and, and we love it. We're we happy to be here. So when the opportunity came, a friend of mine told me about it. She couldn't be part of it. And she said, look, Helen, you have an opportunity to make a difference instead of ranting on calls. This has happened to my daughter. This has happened to me. Come and be part of a community or group of people who will make a difference. It might be small, but over time, by the time your daughter maybe is in middle school or somewhere, there might be something better. So and then I was also in DNI. and I just started also the interest and I took a course in it. But aside from that, I felt the need to be a part of, of, of a change, especially for my for, for my daughter. Um, and another thing, I, I volunteer on, on, on her on her school PTA. So on one of the times I was in for um, recess help, there's a, a, a child who saw me in the corridor wearing a reflector jacket a kid of color, and she was shocked. She was happy. She didn't know what to do with herself. She was literally like, <sighs> I was like, no, but I don't know you. And of course, you have to be careful because you're within a school community. And I just, she waved to me, but you know, she turned back, still looking at me in almost shock that I took it that she's not seen anyone in as, as a racist helper of color or a parent taking interest anyway to come in and help Teresa's. And it stayed with me for a long time. And I felt, okay, I, I, I think like we can't keep hiding and complaining behind the scenes. We have to come out and be a part of this. And then other incidents happened with my daughter in school. So we got to meet um, the principal and we spoke about it. There were issues, of course, she was being picked on because she's, she's, she's black. Um, and what the, the school was open to learn. And I felt like, wow, they were like, we don't know these things. We need to hear from you guys. We don't get to have conversations with parents of color raising these issues. You're raising a black girl in a community where she's being picked on by boys. Like, what does that mean for her? So they were open to hear it, but the school, I didn't have an avenue. I don't know. I didn't even know that the school district had um, a, a community of this kind or where we could share some of these experiences and just make our point to them. So when the opportunity came, I thought, wow, this, this, this is it for me. I, I, I have to be part of it. If not for anything, for my daughters, I have two girls and we've been in Issaquah all this time. They're going to a public school. They must make it because we've made it, but we made it because we're outside of America. They cannot not make it because they are here. And, and, and we made it because we were away from here for our education and for our career growth. So I'm, I'm in it for my children and for every other child of color. Oh, Helen, you touched my heart because that is my story, dear. Uh, and as I'm sure it's most people's stories or a lot of people have had that experience and maybe hadn't had an opportunity to share it or didn't know who to share it with. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, again, it, it really touched my heart because that was my experience and. I came from the United States. It wasn't even a, <laughs> I didn't even come from another country. <laughs> so um, to know that you're having some of those same experiences is heartbreaking. But um, 
it's also nice to know that there are others out here and we just have to find each other and get together and try to fix it. <laughs> so thank you for sharing. Um, yes, Jacob, I see you were next. Oh yeah, um, thank you. Um, I guess I just wanted to say that one of the reasons I joined um, was because as I was talking, like as I talked to like a lot of different people about a lot of the things happening in our world with relation to like race and equity and diversity, it like, Every time I have a conversation, it like expands my point of view and like even within. And so one of the reasons I wanted to join was to expand my point of view even more for one, um, like I just did with listening to Helen's story. Um, so that even after all of us, it, assuming that there's a time and place when some of us aren't able to be on this board anymore, we can take all this experience with us to other places um, where we're able to have a widened perspective. And then another, one of the things that I wanna um, another reason why I joined the board and one of the things that I look forward to as we move forward with the board, and I know this is something we've talked about in past meetings, is having more touch points with the community, because I think having conversations with the community is a great way to like, um, like some of you have mentioned, is like a great way to widen, you know, everyone's perspective, including ours and theirs. Um, and I know that's something we've talked about and like the meetings are open to community members. And so that's one of the reasons I was most excited about the board and that I still am as we move forward. Thank you so much, Jacob. And I am so happy you are here. <laughs> um, I don't, I'm sure everyone else is too, um, but it's always nice to have the younger generation with us. Um, it is also even better to know that you're wanting to learn. You're coming into this with an open mind and that is key. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We are happy to have you here. Um, Preeti, I think you are next. Thank you. Um, so I guess, you know, for my story, I've always been interested and passionate, committed to issues of social justice. And so even through school, um, my first job out of uh, well, graduate school was um, similar, I think, to what Lucretia was saying was in higher ed. I was uh, doing research and program evaluation work on programs that were designed to increase uh, diversity in science, technology, engineering, and math fields. So looking at students as well as faculty and staff and advancement. And um, somewhere through that journey, um, kind of flipped a switch and said, I need to go upstream, um, not just look at kids when they're starting university. So then I went fully in the opposite direction to early learning and looking at access and readiness to kindergarten, things like that. And then um, shifted over into government about five years ago. So I work for a different local government um, doing issues around uh, data driven decision making and using more data um, in management and operations. But um, I would say about three or four years ago, um, I heard John Powell from Berkeley talk about othering and belonging. And um, that made it more personal to me because then all of a sudden I realized my own personal history and you know family history about like being a model model minority and assimilation. And so um, it just made me think more about being othered and what it would take for folks to feel like they actually belong. And so that uh, made me want to engage more hands on in the community. And um, over the last couple of years, I've had some direct roles supporting um, the pandemic with public health, um, supporting schools and childcare, um, managing through the pandemic. And so now I'm just kind of from that experience, just wanting to engage just more personally and directly in this work. So that's why I'm here. Thanks. Thank you so much, Preeti. Um, everyone has so much good stuff to say, and it's all stuff that I've experienced. Um, I love that talk, by the way. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, let's see. Um, we still have uh, Christina. Christina, are you ready? <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh, I okay. know you are, so please share. Okay. Bueno, eh, son muchas cosas por las que entré, principalmente mi personalidad. Well, there's a lot of reasons that brought me here, but first and foremost, my personality. 
porque desde que estaba creciendo en mi hogar, veí que no había justicia. I mean, ever since I, I was a, a kid growing up, I found that there's, there's no justice. Sentía que me trataban diferente porque era mujer y no me gustaba. You know, I saw that I was treated differently just because I was a female and I didn't like that. Mi mamá decía, tú no puedes ver la tele, no puedes jugar, no puedes hacer deporte porque tú eres mujer y eso es perder el tiempo para ti. My mom would say, no, you can't watch TV, no, you can't play sports, no, you can't do this, that, or the other because you're a female. It'd just be a waste of time for you. Tienes que aprender a limpiar, cocinar, a lavar los trastes y hacer tareas domésticas. You need to learn how to cook and clean and do the housework and do the things you need to need to learn for being a housewife. Entonces, desde ahí creo que uno tiene que cambiar, ¿no? Y alce la voz. I, I think from that point forward, I felt like there needed to be change and I needed to raise my voice to it. Eh, mi mamá tal vez no le gustó mucho, pero lo hice y con el tiempo creo que ella lo comprendió. <laughs> Perhaps my mom wasn't a fan of my opinions at the beginning, but I think she got she got used to it and and she understood. Entonces, hoy en día me estoy muy complacida a saber que no solo mis hermanos eh, ven tele y hacen eso, sino que también ayudan a sus esposas a lavar, a limpiar, a cuidar los niños y a hacer más cosas. Y creo que yo influí en eso. So now I'm happy to say, you know, my brothers don't just sit around, but they do help their wives with cooking and cleaning and child care. And, and I feel like I was part of an influence on them. Entonces, pues bueno, creo que soy rebelde por naturaleza. <laughs> I think I'm just a rebel by nature. Y cuando veo una injusticia, no me quedo callada. And when I see injustice, I just can't keep my mouth shut. Eh, Llegar a Isaacua abrió mi mente y estoy muy feliz por eso. Um, coming here to Isaacua has really opened my mind and, and I'm really appreciative. Porque no cualquiera tiene la oportunidad de disfrutar tantas culturas a la vez y, y tratar de entrar a ese mundo y conocerlos. Not everyone has the opportunity to, to experience so many great cultures in one place and to see all the things that life has to offer. Creo que mis hijas están muy, muy felices, o al menos quiero que lo estén. My daughters are really, really, well, I hope, really, really happy. Quiero que lo estén y que se sientan que pertenecen a este lugar. And I really want them to feel like they belong here. Y que no solo sea aquí, sino en cualquier parte del mundo, que se sientan libres y seguras de lo que ellas quieren. And you know, not even just here, but Anywhere in the world, I want them to feel that they have their place, that they feel confident, and they, and they feel sure of themselves. Y ahora creo que Dios está hablando por mí porque creo que esto está sonando muy bonito. And, and I feel like God is speaking for me because this is all just beautiful. It sounds beautiful. <laughs> creo que hasta, no sé, me gustó. <laughs> I don't know. I just really like it. So, mis hijas. Mis hijas, estoy segura que van a crecer en un excelente lugar y es por eso y por mi familia que lo estoy haciendo. Y estoy aquí para decir que el cambio somos nosotros y se puede hacer algo más. And I, I feel like my daughters are having the opportunity to grow up in a wonderful place and it's going to be helpful to them. And I think if there's change, it's we're, we are the change. Recuerdo una vez, que, bueno, recuerdo cuando estaba en la secundaria no me gustaban las matemáticas. I remember the experience, you know, uh, when I was in high school, I did not like math. No, y no. Not at all. Okay. Pero, pero recuerdo que un maestro, bueno, que es, ese maestro en específico de matemáticas nos empujó a todos a participar. Y a veces, aunque nosotros dijéramos que no, él nos decía, vengan, háganlo. And I remember a teacher, I remember our teacher, he, he pushed each and every one of us to participate, whether we wanted to or not, even when we'd say, no, 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 he'd say, no, come on, you can do it. Y creo que a veces las inseguridades nos, nos hacen dejar de hacer ciertas cosas. And I feel like sometimes our own securities are what actually hold us back from doing things. Pero este maestro cambió mi vida. 
But that math teacher, he changed my life. Y ahora me encantan y puedo decir, como las matemáticas. And now I can honestly say I love math. Entonces quiero, quiero ayudar a que estos niños comprendan o vean, no, no solo mis niños, yo a cualquier niño como mío. And, and I really want to be a contributing factor so that these children can see, and not just my children, all children are my children. Puedan ver que, que sean parte de este mundo, que se sientan parte de la comunidad. Y preguntaban algo, que, que veíamos diferente en esta ciudad o en este país. That, that they can all feel that they belong, that they can all feel that they're a part of this community and of this world. And there was the question, what do, what do we see differently in this community? Eso yo lo veo diferente. That's something that I see that's different. Aquí, cuando mi niña fue a preschool y solo hablaba español. Here, when my kids entered preschool and only spoke Spanish. No, no quería jugar y se sentía insegura, pienso yo. They, they didn't want to play. I, they were pretty unsure of themselves, I believe. Y ella estaba sola, no aprendió inglés. She was all by herself and she wasn't able to uh, learn how to speak English. There was no one there for her. There was not one teacher there for her to push her forward and tell her to come here and join the group and play. Y espero que haya sido por COVID o que siga siendo por eso y no sea porque <laughs> I hope that the reason why that didn't happen, it was because of the COVID situation and not because just that's the way life is here in this community. But if that's the case, I want to uh make changes and that's why i join I, I want this to change and i hope so and i'm here really to learn a lot from you all because when i'm able to i will do whatever it takes uh to do so Gracias. thank you Thank you, Christina. Um, I may say this wrong, but I'm going to try it anyway. Me encanta en tus comentarios. Todavía estoy aprendido español, pero me encanta cuando hablas. Me alegro de que estés aquí. Gracias, gracias. <laughs> Me encanta escucharte España. I would español. love to hear you speak your Spanish. <laughs> Gracias. Um, yes, in a group, all I told her was that I really love when she comments and I'm still learning Spanish, but I, I love to hear her speak and I'm so happy that she's here. So um, thank you uh, for your comments, Christina. I think that you really spoke to a lot of us with what you said. So thank you again. Um, and I don't see anyone else, um, but did I miss anyone? And if not, I'd like to hear from Monica if she is available. Thank you very much, Shay, and thank you so much, board members. Uh, it was so, so great to, to hear your comments. I took some notes. As you might have learned so far from me, if you have ideas, I always want to um, to bring them to life and see how I can elevate those voices. So um, thank you. Um, going back, circling back to the initial question and conversation on how we continue to develop our work plan um, for the equity board. I think as uh, it was just, again, so, so great to hear your thoughts and comments and introductions. 
please continue to think about now that you, you are a few months into the board, um, bring those ideas, contact me directly between now and the next few months as, as ideas come uh, to you. So then, then we can add them to the work plan. You might have remembered Mayor Polly really wanted to look at you as a board on, on saying, okay, as you conduct this gap analysis of what's needed, um, she does want to hear from you. And I hear a lot of, definitely a lot of community conversations that need to continue to happen. And so that's our actually next agenda item. I'm going to transition to that if I have uh, uh, your permission, but then to close this one, um, I think we don't need a decision, but I would like your permission. Is it okay then for us to continue as, as we, um, to invite, um, uh, community groups uh, that do equity work in, in uh, Issaquah and in the region to invite department leaders from the city to come and introduce themselves as you learn more in that while also we are adding um, other topics to the work plan. Is that a good plan for the next few months? Um, and like here, uh, I see a question from Pretty, so I'm going to pause there. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Sorry. Um, my my question is when I hear a gap analysis, I think, you know, there's what's the current state and where do we want to be? Like what's our aspirational state? And um I'm not sure have we do we know where we want to be or is that part of what the plan needs to help kind of clarify? What's that future state so we know what how to articulate the gap? Yeah, so that's exactly, I'm so glad you brought it up because that's exactly, I think we identified the first step. We need to see where we are. And so that's why by inviting uh, internally department leaders and inviting the community members, I think we are going to see where we are at. And once we are going to see where we are at, I think then that's when probably we need to talk um, as a board again to see where do we even want to go and what's realistic within the, the scope of this board. So then in the end, then we'll identify the gaps, right? So great. I think I, you put it so much better into words, uh, Pretty, You're right. I don't think we identify that. Um, but I, I also believe, and I may be wrong, but in my thinking was, I don't know that we can identify where we want to be before we at least learn where we are, right? So that's, that was like, the, let's do the initial learning part, right? Um, I, I thought that that would help us, right? Okay, thank you. And Shay, you also have a question. Yes, um, just because... Uh... <sighs> As I'm sure you probably know, I have um, a, a pretty vast network of people that I'd love to share with the group um, that may be able to help us along this journey. Um, however, I, my question is whether or not we would be expected to bring those group member or to bring those members to the group or say, hey, you know, I, I'd like to invite a speaker to just talk to us for a little bit about some of the issues we want to address. So absolutely, send me ideas. I think on my end, we were going to start initially with Issaquah internally, the city departments and in the community with the Issaquah community and perhaps the east side. But yes, I don't think that I know all the groups in the region. So please do send ideas and, and uh, um, connections as you have. Um, so great, great thought. There. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see no other questions, so I think if you don't mind giving me a thumbs up that we are going to proceed as, as mentioned. And with that, thank you so much, uh, board members. Then with that, with your permission, uh, we can move to the next agenda item that dives a little bit deeper in the community engagement and community conversations. So wanted to separate them just because it seems like a little bit complex. So with your permission, I'm going to share my screen. I do have a brief PowerPoint presentation to, to keep me focused here. So I'm going to share that. And then after that, I'm going to open it up for discussion. Can I have a confirmation that I'm sharing the slides show? I can see it, yes. Um, but it looks like you have a your presentation mode up. It is a presentation mode up. 
Yeah, because um, I can see your, your main slide and then also your next slide. Um, yes, I'm not sure if I know how to. There you go. Hey, pick it. it up. Yes, thank you. Okay, so um, in, in talking about community engagement, would love to discuss with you board members and this would be also taking action. So you will be voting hopefully um, at the end of this uh, tonight on what we previously discussed uh, regarding creating a committee uh, that will uh, address community conversations and community engagement. So, as a brief reminder, we talked a couple of times in previous meetings um, about um, how to work as a board in um, engaging more with the community and also having more uh, cultural conversations or community conversations around equity. And so, we discussed um, a few options. Uh, we discussed the idea of creating a committee. Um, and this would be um, because on one end we meet once a month as an equity board and perhaps there's just not enough time for us to have community conversations and also focus on, on, on advancing equity. So um, on one end we considered creating a committee. Uh, we also considered um, adding special meetings or additional meetings to the board or you know we brainstorm a little bit other op options. But I think if... Um, I understood correctly the preference was for us to land on a committee. Um, and so, again, just as a brief reminder, uh, why uh, addressing community engagement um, and why by the equity board, I, I think I'm preaching to the choir to all of you, but in case anyone in the community wonders, uh, right? Um, equity conversations in the community are really important um, because this is, um, uh, about engaging with the community and um, so are, are very, very important in order for us to really advance equity. We want to engage with the community. We want to talk with the community. We don't want to do it for the community, right? Um, so um, with that, um, the, the recommendation tonight and the proposal for you tonight is to create a committee on community engagement. I'm going to talk a little bit about what would mean in terms of a timeline, what would be the scope and membership of the committee. Um, so when you create a committee um, as part of uh, the board, uh, you have the option to have an ad hoc committee or a standing committee. Uh, the standing committee would be a a permanent committee, uh, um, and as you may know or guess, the ad hoc committee, it's a short term um, specific committee. Let's say you can create a committee um, for three months. Um, you have a specific start time and a specific end time, or you can have a standing committee, which basically would be a permanent committee. Uh, you can still at some point review the scope of work of a, per a standing committee, a permanent committee, let's say on an annual basis, and you can still decide at some point to say, oh, if the committee um, met all the its initial scope, you can sunset it. Um, but um, a standing commi committee, um, uh, would, it's understandable, would be a longer term one than just one that would be a couple of months long. So. With your permission, our recommendation would be then for this community engagement committee to just create a standing one, um, because I think there's quite a bit of work that could be done uh, that would warrant a standing committee. Um, the scope, specific scope, we need to um, define it, and our recommendations would be to um, the scope of the committee to um, address cultural conversations that the equity board would be hosting uh, and to come back to you as a board with recommendations regarding ongoing community engagement opportunities. Um, so if you choose to create a, a, a committee, um, the committee would not take decisions on its own. It would be as part of the equity board 
So the committee would need to come back to you for any final decisions um, and also come back to you with reports. So the committee would make recommendations to the board, would not be a separate entity that would take decisions and actions outside of the board. Um, so a, a membership, you can have for the, the committee no more than four members, as you might have guessed and you know by now, uh, if you have five members of uh, the equity board, you have a quorum, uh, which then that um, creates um, other needs and rules and regulations that we need to follow in terms of open meetings act. So um, you will have to have no more than four members. Um, the members will be uh, determined by nominations. Uh, you can self nominate or you can nominate someone. We'll discuss that just uh, in a few minutes. Um, and then also the committee would have a chair that would be selected at the first meeting of that committee. So our recommendation to keep it simple would be number one tonight, then to create a committee on community engagement. And then if you are okay with that as a board, then our also recommendation would be then to appoint four members to serve on that committee. So in terms of what would need to happen next, um, if you agree as a board tonight to take action on creating the committee, we would go and move forward, in, in, forward with implementing the committee. Um, and so that committee will start meeting outside of the regular equity board meetings. And the committee will return someone, the chair or a representative of the committee would return to the board with recommendations. Let's say, um, because we had one cultural conversation back in February regarding Black History Month, um, perhaps the committee can go and discuss what other cultural conversations um, we have capacity and um, interest in doing for the remainder of the year, and then come back with those specific recommendations to the board, ask permission for implementation, and then start hosting those um, conversations. Um, the recommendation is also to provide monthly updates to the board. Perhaps if the committee, let's say, does not meet for one month, the, the report can be just as, as simple as this month, the committee did not meet. Um, or of course, if it's more active and um, depending on um, what the tasks were, then the report may be um, more comprehensive. So with that, I'm gonna pause. This is just a repeat on what the recommendation is tonight. Um, and that is to create a committee on community engagement. And then if um, you take action on that to also appoint members to that. Um, so with that, I think the first, once I'm gonna stop sharing, we even have a proposed motion for you before discussion. Um, so the proposed motion, and if um, if the motion uh, sounds professional, I want to give a shout out to our city clerk, Tisha Gieser. Um, I did not come up with this on my own. I'm very, very grateful for having great um, support from our clerk's office uh, who can walk us through the legalities. So I'm just gonna put it, give me a moment so I can read the motion to you all so you can start discussion. So the motion to establish a committee would be, I move to establish a standing community engagement committee to be composed of four members who are to be nominated by the board. The purpose of the committee will be to make recommendations to the board regarding cultural conversations to be hosted by the board and ongoing community engagement opportunities and provide reports at the monthly board meetings. So we need someone to make the motion um, and someone else to second the motion. Once you have a motion and second it, then you can start conversations, questions around this. Um, and we don't put typically things in the chat, but we do have permission to put the motion so everybody can see it in there. Okay. 
So I guess with that, do we have a motion, a formal motion? Okay, are we allowed to ask questions before we do that? So typically or we want to have the motion and then you start the discussion around it. So you can have questions. Yes. If you don't mind having right. a motion and second, and then you can have, yes. You can also have without. Okay. I, I, okay. I move to establish a standing committee community engagement committee to be composed of 4 members who are to be nominated by the board. The purpose of the committee will be to make recommendations to the board regarding cultural conversations. To be hosted by the board and ongoing community engagement opportunities and provide reports at the monthly board meetings. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. And yes, now, thank you so much. So, yes, please bring comments and questions. Um, uh, okay, so can I go then? Okay, yeah. so I guess my question is, um, have we given any thought as to what other committees may be coming down the pipeline that we have identified either either through um, some of the conversations that we have had and or some of the comments that we have made to either you, Monica, or the, the two chairs. Um, and the reason for my question is because this seems like a very interesting opportunity, but, you know, uh, I guess people should know if a, a different committee comes up, are we allowed to change to the new committee? What are the logistics around committing now versus committing to something that may be a closer match later on? Such a great question, Lucrecia. Thank you so much. And actually, I know Tony brought up and Shay, we did have conversations about perhaps down the line having a need for additional committees. Um, so, rightfully, so, as the uh, board develops, I possibly we may have other committees. My recommendation as staff was let's start with 1, uh, just because as we are still developing as a board, and as we still have quite a bit of work to do, it seems already overwhelming. So, um. So that's where we are. We don't have it figured out. And I think that's why it would be great to hear from other board members and as we develop to see what the need is. Now to the second part of your question, Lucrecia, um, nothing stops you from, let's say, serving on a committee and then later serving on a second committee as well if you have the capacity, as long as you as board members are also okay with just having, if if there are more people interested in multiple committees, just like making sure that everybody has a chance to serve, but um, there's nothing that would stop you as long as you have capacity to serve on more than one committee or even changing later. Um, let's say, like we say, even something happens and you don't no longer have capacity to serve on a committee, you can always step down and someone else may step in um, or change. Does, did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. and then Tony and Ray. Yeah, I just wanted to just a quick comment just to make sure that um, everyone understands who might um, be thinking about participating in you know this this committee is that um, uh, one thing that we talked about, Monica, Shea, and I is that um, if this is something you'd want to do, it doesn't mean that you actually have to be a panelist, let's say, on a cultural conversation. It's really planning out the um, everything, all the logistics that go forward in um, making those cultural conversations happen. That doesn't mean it doesn't preclude you from being a panelist, but it doesn't mean you have to absolutely be a panelist in a cultural conversation as well. So I just wanted to make that clear. Great clarification, Tony. Thank you for that. And well, then I think to add to that, um, I remember our conversation as well. Let's say since you, we can all have, we cannot have more than four members serving on the committee, um, depending on on the conversations or on the topic. Um, you know, it might be where the committee will come and say, "Hey, we don't have the expertise for this topic." But we would like to invite someone who has that expertise, right? I'm going to use myself as an example, it, it, which is silly. Maybe you want to have something on Romanian Hungarian heritage. I don't know. I'm just saying that because I'm, I have both. 
and maybe you know if you don't know someone maybe we'll reach out to someone who's of hungarian heritage to to provide that that input right uh, on the board so um so i guess it's like just because the committee has four members it doesn't mean that there are not going to be opportunities for others to weigh in and provide their professional input right so thank you for that and ray yeah thanks monica um just one question about the hierarchical structure um from this this establishment so if we create the community engagement committee and I can see that as an opportunity to bring forward other issues. So let's say as, a, as an example, this by engaging the community, this by engaging this, creating this community and engaging the community, um, we find a need to focus on, let's just use an example, homelessness. Right? So by creating that homelessness group through this Community engagement committee, do they report up to that community or they can they report directly to the board? Because we find that this is an issue that should be of equal stature to this community engagement committee. That's my question. Such another great, great question, Ray. Thank you. So let's say that through the community um, engagement committee, you identify another um, important uh, issue of equity that you would like to address. So as the committee, the, as as a, the committee cannot take decisions on its own without the equity board. So it would be the committee to come back to the entire board to make that recommendation. And let's say they are going to make the recommend, they come back and say, you know, we identified homelessness. This is a really a big equitable issue that we want to address in, in the, in the community. So they can come to you with a recommendation. And as I foresee, and I understand the options at this point, they could either recommend a subcommittee to the committee. So it would be then the equity board committee and the subcommittee. Or they can come to you and recommend a different committee. So you would have the equity board committee on engagement and committee on homelessness, for example. But again, they would come to you as the larger board with the recommendation and it would be the entire board who may take that decision. Or maybe there's going to be a totally different option. Maybe they're going to say, you know what, human services commission, you are dealing with human services issues. We want to collaborate with you and let's work on homelessness, something like that. Right? So did that help answer the question? Yes, thank you. Thank you. And Lucrecia. That question was answered. Thank you via the, the other question that was asked. Thank you. Thank you. Board members, any other questions about the motion and the recommendation in front of you tonight? I actually do have another question, Monica. Can you please remind me and anyone who doesn't know the answer to this? Um, the people who are not voting members, do they count as a whole person, as a whole member when creating a committee? Meaning, like, do we reach quorum with someone who is a non voting member? Um, let me see if I understood your question. So, for example, in this case, you will be voting tonight on creating a committee. So technically, the non-voting members, if if there's no alignment, and let's say we have a an alternate member and they don't agree with the rest of the, the group, in that case their vote really doesn't count. So we don't we we want to encourage you to see if you get to an agreement, but if you don't get to an agreement, those who are alternate members, their vote is not counted in. Although I would hope and I would encourage you as a board to really hear their voices um so however we do have um in terms of voting and that's a good reminder when it, it comes comes time to voting we do have one of the youth members who is uh, absent tonight so actually jacob who's an alternate would step in in that role and he will be vo voting so he will be a voting member tonight although he is um, an alternate regularly um so did that answer though your question, Lucrecia, about the vote? In part, but what about it? You said that we needed four members to have a committee and not reach quorum. Yes. So 
can we have a fifth member that is who is not a voting member be a part of that? Okay, that was okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So then uh, alternate members can also be part of the committee, but you cannot have more than four members. No, you cannot have a fifth. Yeah, you want to have four. And that can include Got alternates it. and regular members. Great question. Got it. Yeah. Because so the way it works is an alternate automatically steps into the role of a regular member when when a regular member is not present, right? So then if you had a fifth member, they would be automatically representing the board. So it would be a quorum. Got it. So yeah, four. Yeah. Um thank you. Other questions before we move to voting. I see no other questions. So in that case, actually before, so you can do two things board members. You can vote first on the creation of the committee and then you can nominate members for the committee or we can now nominate members of the committee and you vote at the end once for both for creating the committee and to also um, acknowledge the members of the committee. Do you have a preference? If you don't have a preference, no, I don't. Feel free to put comments, questions. If you don't have a preference, then instead of just voting now once, I would um, recommend that we talk about um, nominating. So feel free to nominate someone for the committee or self-nominate yourself if you're interested in being part of the committee. Um, so we would need four members interested in the community engagement. Okay, um, we need a committee uh, or we need to minimally nominate some people in order to then vote whether it's gonna pass. So I would like to express interest if people feel that they're comfortable with what I bring and offer to the table, then I would like to nominate myself. Thank you, Lucrecia. Any other nominations, self-nominations or nominating someone else? for the engagement committee, community engagement committee. Can we nominate multiple people? I don't see why not. Okay, uh, the first person I'd like to nominate is Christina. Uh, the second person I'd like to nominate is Prithi. The third person, look, I'm just going down a list here. The third person I'd like to nominate is Helen. Fourth person is Alicia. And yeah, I got to nominate Ray. <laughs> and, you know, and, and I'm using this based on like when we were putting out that message, everyone who spoke up is literally on this call and Lorna as well. Everyone who was like really contributing the most to that message is on this call right now. So thank you so Can much. I nominate for... myself as an alternate member. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shay. So before I'm gonna go to ask all the nominees to see if they accept the nomination, then I see Alyssa has a comment. Uh, unfortunately, what I was gonna say was just that I don't know that I will be able to commit the time. So I appreciate the nomination, but I have to uh, decline. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And that's totally understandable. This is an extra time commitment. So, so we have Lucrecia, we have Lisa nominated, but she, she cannot make the time commitment. We had Christina as one of the uh, person who was nominated. Christina, would you like to comment on that? Are you interested in the committee? 
me interesa, solo tengo algunas limitantes como tal vez el idioma y, y que no manejo. Entonces, si, si no es un impedimento, podría asistir. I am, I am interested. Uh, there's uh, some limitations that I do face. Uh, for instance, the language barrier, and also uh, I don't drive. But if those aren't any uh, impediments, then I'm interested in participating. Yes. And thank you, Tony. <laughs> thank you, Christina. And I see Tony has a comment before I respond to one of your questions. Go ahead. I was just I was just going to say um, that I, I shouldn't be trying to convince anybody to be a member of this committee, but. Um, uh, Christina, I, uh, in my personal opinion, with your your uh, experiences here in Issaquah, um, your the experiences from your daughters, the experiences that you face um, as well, um, I, I think your voice will be a very very important voice on this committee in terms of equity. Um, all up. I mean, we, oftentimes we don't think about is one thing I'm doing at work at Microsoft is thinking about language barriers that that occur in the different trainings that, that we have. And I think that that's a very big factor in these community conversations that occur. So uh, I'm glad that you thankfully would like to be a member of this committee. That's it for me. Thank you very much, Tony and uh, Christina. If you are okay, uh, we will figure out the um, interpreter so the language should not be a barrier. And the same with driving um, access should also that not be a barrier. So we'll work through those details. Um, so thank you. Next, we had um, Priti. Um, what are your thoughts about the nomination? I'm honored to be nominated. Um, I don't feel like community engagement is um, a strength for me, so I would um, I would like to decline because I think other folks could contribute in um, more creative, engaging ways than I could. But I do appreciate the nomination, Tony. Thank you so much, Preeti and um, Tony, for sure. Um, I think Helen. Thank Tony, you, Tony. You so fast. I, I hope I got all the nominations correctly. <laughs> Please stop me if I didn't. Go ahead, Helen. Thank you, Tony. Um, I, I, I accept it with a lot of honor. Thank you so much. I, I would be glad to be part of it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Helen. And then Ray and Lorna. Uh, this is Ray. I respectfully accept, and uh, I look forward to working closely with this committee. One caveat: I, I, um, with time constraints, when it comes time to decide, I, I would prefer not to be chair, but I would love to be part of the committee. Thank you so much, Ray. And Lorna. At this time, I think I would love to be a backup person after Shay, but um, sometimes with my work, it gets confused with the work of the district, especially it, since it is so community visible within our community. And so with this kind of community engagement, I'd rather be part of conversations as a member, a community member, rather than organizing just to make sure I'm drawing boundaries and delineating my role in the district versus with this working with the city. So I will decline. Thank you for the offer, the nominee, Tony. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, all of you. And I know, Shay, you also offered to be an alternate. Any other nominations before I summarize everything I heard here? Or self-nominations? once twice so it actually it seems like it works all just kind of like perfectly because unless i uh, um did not do my math correctly i think we have nominations that were accepted we have lucrecia christina helen and ray 
and then alternate possible backups being Lorna and Shay. Correct? Did I get that correct? And then Tony can be also an alternate if needed. But I think we do have the four members. So I think now, with your permission, we can move to the vote. So an, the actual vote would be for you in front of you tonight, board members, part one to um, a vote the creation of an engagement committee. And I'm going to go back to to the motion because Tisha reminded me that we need to be very specific with putting all the details. So, um, oh, I lost my comment about where is the motion. There you go. So the vote for you tonight would be creating a standing community engagement committee to be composed of four members, which will be Lucrecia, Christina, Helen, and Ray. Um, so no, they are nominated. They were nominated by the board. The purpose of the committee will be to make recommendations to the board regarding cultural conversations to be hosted by the board and ongoing community engagement opportunities, and then to provide reports at the monthly board meetings. So um, we would proceed with a roll call for this. And so when I call your name, please just tell um, us how you vote. So you can vote that you agree, aye or yes, or if you don't agree, um, you say no or nay. Um, so with that, I'm just gonna please vote when I call on your name. And the first person to vote will be Christina. How do you vote? Can I vote for any other person, right? So no, <laughs> you just need to vote yes or no. So whether or not you agree to create the committee and the four members. So basically you vote either yes or no. You vote yes if you want to create the committee with the four members that we mentioned, Lucrecia, yourself, Helen, and Ray, or you vote no. Okay, yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Megan is not here, so instead of Megan, we have Jacob who's going to vote. Yes. Thank you. Elisa, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. Lorna, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. Um, Helen, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. Lucrecia, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. Ray? Yes. Thank you. Tony? Tony, I'm sorry, I did not hear sorry. you. Sorry, talking on mute. Sorry, yes. There you go. Thank you. And Shay, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. And um, I think that passes unanimously. Thank you very much, equity board members, and congratulations. You have now a community engagement committee. <laughs> yes, congratulations. So, committee members, again, thank you so much to Chrissy, Christina, Helen, and Ray. I will follow up with you uh, directly and uh, we will proceed to schedule the first meeting and um, um, we'll go from there. Congratulations again. Thank you. Shay, back to you. I think we can move to the next agenda item. All righty. So thank you so much, Monica. I we are actually at the end of our agenda. Um, other than that, I think the only thing we have left is the staff report. Do you have anything for us today? Thank you very much, Shay. I have just a sm it's not small. I think, however, it would be nice. This is uh, on uh, based on recommendation from Tony on acknowledging starting perhaps for us to acknowledge religious cultural heritage related um, um, holidays for the month um, so i would just like while we and definitely we will rely on the community engagement committee in the future to see how we may acknowledge the the religions or the different holidays not just the religious holidays um, I think that I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to highlight 
a few holidays for the month of April. Um, and again, this can be heritage month type of events or cultural or religious holidays. Um, and it's just um, an opportunity for us to read more or to reflect upon those. So with your permission, uh, as I was looking, we have quite a few holidays in the month of April. Um, so in terms of heritage type events, allow me just a moment to bring up my notes. Um, so um, perhaps not as known in the community or I want to acknowledge that I was not aware, uh, but April is also a national Arab American Heritage Month. Um, I also know um, April is Autism, Autism Awareness Month. Um, it's National Deaf History Month, uh, Sexual Assault Awareness Month, uh, National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Um, and so these are a few highlights in terms of heritage months. Um, in terms of cultural and religious holidays, um, we just started earlier this month, a few days ago, uh, Ramadan started and it's uh, being observed by our Islamic community members. Um, started on April 2nd, it's going to go Ramadan until May 2nd. So you may see it if my, you may have friends, coworkers um, or yourself. Um, um, I know that the um, community um, often um, um, observes fasting from sunrise to sunset. Um, so um, just a note on that. Um, multiple uh, other holidays throughout the month. Uh, the Jewish community members uh, start on April 15th. Passover begins. Uh, between so um, April 15 to the 23rd. Um, the Baha'i community members observe a couple of holidays, uh, the first, first day of Ridvan. Um, the Christian community members celebrate Easter in April. Um, so you're gonna have Holy Week Easter on April 17. Um, also following the the week after um the regular easter those who celebrate are the eastern orthodox Dox church celebrates easter a week after so similar they will have good friday and the holy week in easter just the following weeks so the orthodox easter it's on april 24th um and uh, another Baha'i um, holiday at the end of the month, the ninth day of Ridvan. Um, also another Jewish holiday at the end of the month, the day of remembrance. Um, earlier, actually, just in a couple of days, there's the National Day of Silence um, observed by the LGBTQI plus community members. Um, Hindu community members um, also celebrate on April 10th, um, Ramana Bami, I apologize, I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly, um, Punjabi New Year's is next week on April 14th, um, so many, many holidays at the end of the month, at the very end of the month, the Mexican community members celebrate the children's day um, so just wanted to highlight these at this point would love for us to continue the conversation on how we can acknowledge all the holidays in the future and perhaps how the community engagement committee can choose in advance um, perhaps holidays that um, we can have community conversations around on and so with that, I'm just going to pause to see if there are any comments or questions, but that would conclude, I think, um, my portion of the small presentation for staff. Thank you. No comments, no questions. Thank you for that.
I think that concludes my presentation in that case, equity board members. Thank you so much for a great meeting tonight. Oh, Monica, I'm sorry. I did have a question. I was just typing really slowly. Um, I wanted to ask, um, I, I guess I, I was more so concerned on how we would be um, reflecting. Um, is this something where we would actually post a comment somewhere or have a, a statement much like we did with Ukraine or something in that realm of things? And, and I think my recommendation to that, Shay, would be, I would love to take the opportunity now that we have a community engagement committee to discuss this at the community level, and perhaps we can come back with a recommendation to the entire board. Um, because um, I think, yeah, just one, there are just so many things that we should be mindful of and how to best do that. So is that okay with you if we come back from the community engagement committee with a recommendation on how to best do that in the future? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right, last opportunity, folks. We're coming to the end of the meeting. All right, if there's no one else, then uh, Monica, is it okay if I give you all four minutes back <laughs> for your night? <laughs> No questions, no comments. Well, as usual, it was so good seeing all of your faces. I'm so happy you're here. Um, our next meeting is going to be May 4th, 2022. Um, I look forward to seeing everybody then. But other than that, we are adjourned. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a good night. Bye -bye. You too. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.